Hi, welcome back to another episode of Penny with Friends. As usual, I'm Vaz Hayes, and today I am guested by or accompanied by Abigail Fur. Hey, what's up? Introduce yourself, Abigail. Hey guys, my name is Abigail Fur. I'm a singer songwriter. Um, I'm based in the DMV, and I make R&B soul music. Nice. Oh my gosh, we got a hometown hero. Mm. Um, so yeah, you can start painting, and I'm just Yay. gonna ask you some questions. And we're just gonna go from there. All right, cool. So, how long have you been making music? Oh boy. Uh, so I picked up violin in elementary school. I was trained classically. It's been like ten years now. Uh, ten years, yeah. Uh, and then in high school, I picked up guitar senior year, and then just kind of went with it. So. I learned on YouTube actually, and then just started playing local gigs. My mom made me do an open mic night, and then it just kind of went from there. I just started booking myself for local shows, and then it's just been growing ever since. So. So what was your first open mic at? Oh, Girani. Girani. Are you Compton. serious? Yeah, that was my first ever stage performance. I haven't been in a little while actually. I lived. What's listened. the last time? Oh gosh, maybe last year, beginning of last year. Years. Oh no 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 not you years. Said, like, During the pandemic. <laughs> nah, they were closed. No. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yes. Do you feel like um coming from that type of beginning, it kind of gives you like a sense of confidence? Or does it feel kind of daunting the type of performances that you do now? Uh no, I feel like um, you know, I, I perform a lot, so mm -hmm. I kind of just get excited about it. I like helping people and I like engaging with others so yeah doing music is kind of my way of doing that i get to be on stage i get to interact with people is that what you, who you make it for or is that like music yeah like, no. is that like your approach uh, i make music for myself but i mm -hmm. hope my personality reaches people when i perform if that makes sense so who's so. like um so what is like your your fan base like who do you who do you like like what crowd or or type of mini culture society are you making your music for oh um Honestly, I mean, my music is really just a release for myself mm -hmm. of emotion. I mean, sometimes my songs are, I mean, my songs are always stories, but sometimes they're not always my own story. Um, so I try and keep lyrics pretty relatable for everyone, mm -hmm. but the message I always make for myself, if that makes sense. So I feel like a lot of us go through the same things. So they always end up being relatable to others. Yes. Yeah. You connect to like that human yeah. nature. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Yeah. What would you say is like your favorite song that you made so far? Oh, uh, let's see. I have this one song. All my music's unreleased, by the way. But I have it's this. All unreleased. Yes. This is why I couldn't find you or do anything. See. On Spotify. She's a mystery. Nah. <laughs> you have nothing out. Listen, you gotta build a brand. Oh my God. It's How all are about you doing the brand. This? I'm just doing it. I mean, I talk to people. I network a lot. Um, yeah, I released some songs years ago, but I took them all down because I was ready to rebrand myself. So, so when did when you start taking everything down? Oh, three years ago. Three years ago? Yeah. And you got it down for three years? Yeah. And you've just been like popping up and just performing? Yep. And you're, and you're just like, I've just been building. Yeah. I saw that you got the site and you were like, um, we're doing touring and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So how did you pull that off? Um, networking. I, just you know, yeah, I'm, I'm a little entrepreneur. I would used to send cold emails to businesses. I would give them phone calls. I would show up um, with my guitar and just play for them right then and there on the spot. Uh, yeah. I, and then I just kind of kept networking. <laughs> I know. That's hunger. That's hunger. <laughs> it really was, though, because I wanted to do it full time. And I was like determined. I was like, this is my plan A. Does and anybody it, like ever like speak on that? Like when you pop up one, you're like, OK, you're serious. But like, do they ever actually like, where is the music? Where can I get it? Oh, like, everybody. You just have to see it. You yes. Have to see it. Come. And yeah. See it. Yeah. Everybody asks me when I'm putting songs out and I'm just like, um, I don't know. I have a lot of music, but I'm, I'm just not ready yet. I feel like you feel like you'll put it out like once you have like that signing and like everything else. And you're not like, necessarily oh. signing, but um, I'm, I'm still finding myself as a person and mm -hmm. I feel like I'm changing every day. So I feel like my music will. It has to like find that center yeah. or something. Yeah, it'll feel right when it's time, I feel like. So what would you say like is like so far, what do you feel like you've grounded it theme wise or in terms of like an identity with yourself? Um, I'm kind of finding myself spiritually, I would say. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my music is about love 
and it could be i mean yeah, i know right <laughs> uh so some of but so, like i said you know i write about other people's lives too so some of my music is stories of others that they've gone through um but i'm trying to you know work on making some songs that are about my personal growth as a person and you know dealing with whatever past trauma and what that looks like and making that into my music if that makes sense yeah and is that like the therapy sense of it all yes. and it doesn't deal with like a lot of like life experiences yes so would you say like a lot of your stuff just relates to maybe like a it's like an autobiography in a sense i guess you could say that so, thanks and do you find like people often like relate to your autobiography You're like you live in my life yeah a lot of my close friends i mean <laughs> oh edit it out <laughs> crop it out crop it out <laughs> I'm just painting blue right now. Oh my gosh. That is so fun. I always get a background going. Yes. This is very therapeutic, actually. I'm, it is. I'm really it's enjoying this. Yeah. You get to like, just bring out the sense of color in your own life. Yeah. So, next question for you. Mm -hmm. Where did your tour start? Uh, honestly, it's not, it's not really a tour. I just put show days together all the time. I try just like, and you just say it's a tour. I mean, no, That's no, no, no. I mean, if I have like five <laughs> shows together, then yeah, it's, it's like, basically a tour. If they line up like that, then yeah, it's kind of a tour, like but hitting it. yeah. So most of the time I'm usually just hitting it. Um, I have, you know, been building network and connections with different companies so that I can do regular shows with them. So that's kind of, yeah, I just kind of bounce back and forth. I go everywhere. I just got back from Philly the other day. So. I saw it. Yeah. What was that like? That was the crowd. The crowd was awesome. It, it was such a different vibe for me. Like, I wasn't used to, I don't know, everywhere you go, people are different. So When I was looking at the shots, I was just like, the, all these faces, I was like, this looks like a country. Yeah, type, type yeah, thing. right. Like, so do they do they usually like mix you into those avenues and you just you're like the the outlier that's like this doing R and B and they don't inspect it. You know that happens a lot. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with So Far Sounds no. at all. Okay, so it, it's a platform. Um, it's all over the world. It started in the UK, but they book artists all over the world, and it's three artists. You never know who you're performing with, and you could be three very different artists. And that's usually what it is for me. Like I'll go and it'll be a rock band and I don't know, alternative. Is that like, is that a good thing to do? Does it work out? It does. Okay. Cause the people who come to those shows, they pay to be there and they are serious about like underground music. Yeah. 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 Okay, so cool. they, they come to hear the music. They don't care who it is. They don't even know who it is until they get there. So nice. they don't even know where they're going until the day of the show. So they're like, we just guarantee that they're built. And that's yes. How they sign you on. Yes. You got to just make people happen they probably like, like so how was the show afterwards right and if I'm like, she killed me. <laughs> i mean i would hope so <laughs> put, put in practice in and also that you were with a band and stuff so you took yeah. your band touring with you mm -hmm. i took them to philly with me uh and are they like as serious about music as you are oh yeah they're really serious yeah so where do you, where do you want your music to take you um i've never been in love with the idea of being famous if i'm being honest and that's probably a terrible thing to say you're like this is like media. i get this a lot and i'm just like nobody wants to be famous but they're like they're doing all this honestly stuff. yeah i mean i love i love putting things together i love connecting with people so any avenues or any opportunities that i have to do that i'm gonna take them like i have i have plans i want to build i don't know i just want to build resources for young black kids to play instruments and that is really my goal right now so uh, yeah so any way i can use music to do that fund that in any type of way create a program i'm looking to do that that is my that is that is amazing yes. so you like open up a studio type thing or is it like more like an art center or you like want to be like a teacher afterwards uh, and teach instruments i mean i don't want to speak too early on myself um mm -hmm. but yeah i definitely would love to have a space of my own to invite people to like this and, is, and do similar yeah that is Make me want to cry. Ah, uh, don't cry. Make me want to cry. <laughs> we need more people like that. You don't understand. I mean, I just we're looking towards the future. So. I just feel like we really gotta build as people together. God, that's inspiring. Yes, sir. If you could do music full time, would you want to do music full time? Oh yeah, that's always the goal. Do you do it now full time, or like, are you? What is your side hustle? Um, so I'm a social media manager for a lot of chiropractors offices nice yes so that's what i do on the day-to-day -day. i feel like um, anytime there's like someone our age in a social media manager mm -hmm. position it's just like they always just choose us like your age oh really know what you're doing 
they've never seen any of our work. They've never seen what we do on social media. They don't know. True. Like, we just fit the we're description, just, right? They, they don't know if we just run a meme account. They're just like, you're just young. I so mean, you probably understand it. that I mean, I, I honestly went into social media as a freelance business. So I had started my own company uh, doing social media in 2020 Ooh, and then COVID hit and it kind of ruined things. So I was like, you know what? Let me get into the corporate like world. The best time of social media. What happened? You know, social media there were a lot of I was also traveling with music and doing all these other things. So okay. I, I just kind of didn't really have time to keep up with everything at the time. But yeah, but I love social media. I mean, it, it's definitely beneficial since I do music to market myself. So. I'm all here for it. What has been your best experience so far with doing your music? Ooh. Uh, um, let's see. I love being in the studio. The studio is so much fun. You get to create anything you want. Yes. Do you, do you like your own you have like your own personal studio or do you go somewhere? Uh before? so I have a home studio right now. Nice. Yeah. So I work in my home studio, but I was traveling back and forth to LA and New York with my management. Um and doing a bunch of sessions. And that was a lot of fun, getting to work with all these different producers who worked with like big wigs, yes. like big name industry people. So that was a really unique experience that I'll cherish forever. <laughs> Did you also visit any spots like where you were in LA? Uh, what do you mean? Like Sicy? Yes. Uh, I saw the Hollywood sign from outside my hotel. I, I don't like walking around LA by myself. You shouldn't. I know, right? You shouldn't. West Hollywood. Everybody gang bang. <laughs> right. I was like, hold on, let me stay in my hotel room. Yeah, I had some weird things happen in LA. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Yeah, I don't even need to explain it for you to know. Yeah. LA is different. We love the West Coast, but LA is different. Us East Coasters don't do things like that. <laughs> Usually, like, when I ask somebody who's, like, been to the LA, um, LA spots, they're like, First thing they mentioned is like, I had to hit up cookies. And I was like, okay. You know, I've never been there. You never went to cookies? No. Never that type thing. No. Cool. This is going to be a, a way better interview. Mm. A way more original. Because <laughs> usually all we get is cookies. And I'm like, yep, I had to get back. Oh my gosh. When I went though, there was this guy on the stairs on Hollywood Boulevard. Is it Hollywood Boulevard in West Hollywood? That main strip with the stars? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, anyway, there was a staircase there. There was a guy dressed as Joker, and he looked just like the Walking Venus version of Joker. And he was reenacting it, and he had the whole outfit, and he had the face on and everything, and he was just scream laughing on the stairs, and the police had to come get him. That's when I decided I'm not leaving my hotel room anymore for the was rest it of the Joaquin show. Phoenix, though? It's like <laughs> it, well, I know, right? I wish it was. It looked <laughs> like cool. him, but you no. You would have let him go? I don't know what happened. You think the police would have let him go if it was? Maybe, yeah. I'm like, oh, Mr. Watt, you're just practicing for your Austin would have took him up. Like, listen, man. Right. It's 10 o'clock. It's 10 a.m. We ain't got time for all that. Please. What is like one of your weirdest moments that you've had as an artist? Um, I don't know. I used to play a lot of bars. I guess it kind of makes sense if I was playing bars. But when I was like 17, a little younger, under 18, I was playing a lot of bars and a lot of people would ask to buy me beer all the time. And I felt like that was kind of weird. And they knew your age? Yeah. yeah that's, that's oh, weird. too much. Yeah, that's not cool. Yeah. But weird moments? I don't know. I've had more cool experiences than I guess I've had weird moments in music. What's the coolest experience? I met Dominic Fike. Do you know who that is? He's an artist. Oh, okay, okay. He's he? he's a he's an artist. He's like um, would you say pop? No, alternative pop kind of music. Um, but he's a really great artist. And he was really nice when I met him. Does he have any like famous hits or anything that I would know? Maybe I don't know him, but I probably do know him type style. I don't know. What do you listen to? I listen to everything. Is there an accept after that? Because there's usually an accept. No. You listen to everything, everything? Mm -hmm. Like if I was to turn, if I was to like open my Spotify and just like put on shuffle. It's very diverse. Like every single genre. Oh, I don't even know. I'm drawing a blank right now. I'm a little, uh, it too, so. It's all good. If you were to collab with anybody, like who was your dream collab? Erica Badu. Erica Badu? Yes. Okay, what is it about Erica Badu? She just has this presence about her. It's the confidence, you know, it's the style. She experiments a lot with her clothes, and I really love that. That inspires me a lot. She has such an amazing personality. Yeah, she's a doula too. So it's like on my vision board that you'll be my doula one day. I don't know. Uh, but I love Erica. I saw her live, and I cried, and it was amazing. And What made you cry? She just 
it's was like it like a certain song or was it no it was her presence and like everyone had their eyes on her only like though it's like i don't know it just felt like we were all together listening to erica as a group instead of just everyone's individual experience and she was also um she had a beat pad on stage with her so she was like doing the beats live Are like you serious? yeah while she was up there for like a good hour and a half before she even said a word and i was like okay Erica, that's how you know you're a star you can go up there and do that and everyone's screaming and cheering for you jesus yes i didn't even know she had that type of ability right you should, if you get the chance to see her live, I highly recommend. It sounds like a magical experience. It is a very magical experience. She seems like a magical person. Yes. Do you feel like it would rub off on you if you ever worked on her? Work with her? <laughs> uh, I mean, I feel like I would just learn a lot. I feel like she has so much knowledge to get. Yeah. I mean, shoot, if someone's off, I'll take it. <laughs> okay. What is probably like one of the oddest facts about you that you're willing to share? Uh, um odd facts about me mm-hmm. i don't know i could give you random i'm pretty good at a british accent uh i'm obsessed with buffalo wings okay we're That's gonna talk odd. with a british accent to the rest of the all right we're switching over mm-hmm. this is um right thank you um i've been working on it for a little bit um it's Helen. Uh, quite a long time, like my, my entire life. My mom's from London, actually. So yeah, you get, you get somebody personally. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, so it's like how do I carry yeah. a syllable? Or how do I carry a syllable? How do you carry a syllable? A syllable. Yeah, like you know, when it's like color. Color. Like color. Color with a U. Yeah. yeah C O L O U R. Like favorite. Fa- favorite. Yeah. Favorite. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Since a certain little word stuck. So he was That's probably lovely. happy when the queen passed. Oh. Yeah, he's probably too. You know, what I was happened? wondering when you're going to bring that up, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting passing? it, yeah. The queen passing? I bring it up every single day. It's like a... It's like a piece of me. I wanted Betty White to survive her, and it just mm. it hits me mm. every single time because I just wish Betty White had a little bit more time. That if, if God took her first... God saved you, the queen, you, but God took her first. You sound like you from one of those, like wrong side of the tracks in britain <laughs> and London. That's what you, that, mm. you mean like a real road man yeah, yeah. a road man collie man it's all pretty it's not like i'm dissing her yeah she's a good woman maybe who knows probably not i don't know well, who knows God, what she was like she burns I, oh. but yeah that's not for me to this judge. got very deep very quickly yeah it you got personal to, huh? did you travel to london yeah i've been i've been here yeah, twice twice yep um, um, what do you stay when you should go to um in a hotel um in crystal palace i like crystal palace a lot it's in south london my mum's from there i've got lots of family over near like waterloo area what do they usually take you when you go oh chicken shop chicken shop yeah i'm obsessed with i'm a switchback sorry <laughs> Y'all are just so casual. I know. <laughs> uh, just so hold on. That I need this. I need right. Go, right. I was like, hold on. The chicken shops in the UK, they stay open late. Um, it is real chicken. You know how over here it, the chicken pieces are like. What part of the UK? South London. South London? Yeah. Ooh. South London. Yeah, yeah. I like South, South London. London. Got, it got the rice. It got the crack. It got everything. You know, that's a real, that's the real get. Hey, let me tell you. What you know about South London? Hey, um, that's not the South London. I know. Well. Oh. <laughs> part of London. My homies, um, they, they, um, they used to rap. He said, "Pause." Yeah. <laughs> nah, but they got chicken shops over there. They're always good. It's always good. Fish and chip shop. I'm clearly I know about the. Clearly I'm a foodie, because that's all I know. <laughs> nah, but I've seen Big Ben. Um, yeah, there's like this really cool art space over there. Was I can't. It as big as people say this. What Big Ben? Yeah. It's like, what if it's smaller and it just flex a lot? Honestly, like, though, it was really not that big. See? <laughs> see? I mean, it was a big lot of people for its time. Exactly for size. You see? It makes see the story this? more interesting. <laughs> no, it was big for its time. But now... <laughs> <laughs> it was big for its time. <laughs> how, how many stories do you think? Sheesh, I don't know. I have no idea. 12, I have 14, a question. 12? That's a lot. Have you guys talked about like your your, your tours that you just came off? Because I know you did. Yeah, we talked a little about bit. Her. Yeah. Where has been actually? Where what has been your favorite place? Like your favorite oh, spot? 
that, that you have visited while performing music? Um, shoot. You know, I did do a show a couple of years ago. I did the Lights On Festival with her. Um, so the, the, you did a the what? The, the Lights On Festival. The Lights On mm-hmm. Festival? Yeah, out in California. Did you get yeah. to see her perform? I did. I got oh to give God. her a hug and take a picture. And it was amazing. And she's so nice. Yes. Yeah, she just seems like mm-hmm. It was super cool. Come true. Yes, that was a really cool spot that I performed. Spot yeah, you know, she just didn't reveal her face for a long time. Yeah, I was like, who's this lady? She was trying to build her brand. That's I awesome. you, who do you who do you who are you inspired by? I need um, to ask that first. I need to know. A lot. Um, I like you know Marvin Gaye. I like Erica okay. Badu. Like I said, I like uh, favorite Marvin Gaye song. <sighs> you were my wife. You gotta sing up, you gotta sing up. I can't hear that. Uh, what's that song? What's that song called? We should have done Song Association. What's that song called? Satis- uh. <laughs> Clearly, it's not my favorite. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, nah, you know. I don't know. Right. No, nah, I'm terrible because I don't. If you ask me who my favorite artist is, I'm gonna forget. If you ask me what their favorite song is, I'm gonna forget. It's okay. I'm not gonna be able to I tell you. Oh yeah, just to keep me satisfied by Marvin Gaye. That song is beautiful. We can chop that up <laughs> in the editing, in post production. <laughs> My bad. How are these paintings coming along? Mm-hmm. What are you guys painting? That's what I want to know. Are you guys painting over there? I'm making a sky. Ooh. Oh, oh okay. That looks nice. It's that's that's there. your it's sky. It's getting there. Well, I can- those look like camera. flames. Oh. Yeah. It looks like what? Flames. No, I'm just asking oh, what is. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, cool. There's a kind of song going on. Mine oh, okay. Just blue right now. Do we have black? I do have black. Can I have some, please? Yeah, all power. Thank you. What else y'all want to know? Let me see. I'm up a big too. Stump me. Stump you? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So, since you said to stump you, um, what do you, when people hear Abigail for, or when people know you, what do you want them to know you for? Hmm. That's a good wow, question. Wow, well, that was quick. I've never <laughs> been asked that before. I know. You did stump me. Um, I have stumping questions. I just, you know, I try to, I try to, you know, glide them in. <laughs> you know. Like, carefully. This is going to sound very, like, deep or whatever, but. Go for it. I try and be a genuine person or as genuine as i can so Mm -hmm. i hope that that shows through in my music and in my life in general um i'm really passionate about helping people and building a sense of community yeah um so i want everyone that hears my music or sees me live to feel connected if that makes sense i want to feel like a sense of community Uh yeah that's why I love doing intimate shows. I love like the little. The intimacy is like yeah, the best. Like, I've been learning that um, mm-hmm. just doing like random performances and stuff and like just having your friends there. It is like such a great feeling mm-hmm. rather than like feeling the pressure of having to perform in front of strangers. Yeah. Just being able to have fun with your friends and they already know the words and you're able to act as silly as you want up there. Yeah. If you want to perform the song any type of the way or you want to do it slightly different, mm-hmm. you totally have that power. Yes. Definitely it. All Preach. right. Next stumping question. Mm-hmm. This flies um, kill my vibe. Sometimes the flies they want to die. I know. So they ask for it. They 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 do. Yeah. I, I slime them out every single chance I get. Mm. Um the art director here thinks uh <laughs> Things have issues because of it. Like, <laughs> if you want to go, it's your time to go. I mean, if you couldn't find a way to, go, I'm not saying nothing. There, there's food and like water drains and like every everything else. But you chose, Mm-mm. you chose the reaper. <laughs> 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 All right, this is a very advanced question, and I hope you've been considering it. Okay. So, in the metaverse, oh. what do you see yourself as? If you had to construct yourself in the metaverse, how would you build yourself? Oh. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be human though. I'd want to be like robot. Like a robot. Yeah, right. I feel like that's kind of a given. That'd be cool though. Like a robot. I don't know. I feel like I'd want power. 
if it's a metaverse i mean come on you can would just... you be like a human-sized robot or like yeah, bigger than everyone else around Gundam? yeah nah human size <laughs> right <laughs> he's testing you and can i slam him out on camera you need sound effects though. i think that's <laughs> you go <laughs> you gonna do all that and still miss? Take out the cuss word. This, this, <laughs> this take out the cuss word. Clip it, clip it. See, he's making your job up. harder. <laughs> <laughs> you messed up. We didn't it's get him. It's the fly's fault. I didn't aim high enough. You're, when you kill a fly, you're supposed to go over. You never go under where you're aiming. You have to go over because they lift off. It is a really good secret technique. Hmm. You want to murder it really fast. That is good to know. If you ever have to take a fly out. You like animals? Yes, I was just about to talk about my dog randomly, but I'm so glad you came up with a segue for that. <laughs> I just got a puppy. His name is Kush, um, and Kush. he is the best thing ever. Yes, that is my boy. That is a nice name for a dog. That is like really. That is a great name. People either love it or hate it. <laughs> no, that is a great name. Thank you. I love hearing like more original dog names. Yes. Because like, oh, God, I'm so tired of the Lunas, the Moon, the, the Max, the Max, right. The, the the hunters the jaegers the oh my god not the jaegers not the jaegers <laughs> anything but the jaegers anything but the jaegers sorry tiffany oh um, sorry tiff <laughs> she'll be like she can't call so, me so, okay. she's not allowed <laughs> right I will check, I will check her in the street <laughs> so, um so are, is, is it a giant robot? That's that's who we're going with? Yeah, we're going with giant robot. Are we going like, is it like Iron Giant? Is it like Gundam? Is it like, it's like... What is Gundam? Um, uh, Japanese giant robot. Uh, I mean, it sounds like that would be the, the best choice, so... And why do you feel a robot? What, what, is, what is the robot? Part? I mean, I already like, experienced the human life. I know what that's like. See, it's like, is it like the sense of immortality or is it like the sense of function? The sense of immortality? Yes. Do I want to live forever? Probably not. But in the metaverse, in the metaverse, like I can do anything. anything. In the metaverse, you could feel as a robot. Yes. Well, it's yours. Can't feel. What would you be? Oh my gosh! I didn't expect you to turn this thing on me. You gotta stump you back. No. <laughs> it ain't about me. <laughs> I'm a. I'm like a person of a lot of spontaneity. So okay. I would never be able to settle for one thing. I would constantly change it up. Mm -hmm. the, the That's a cop out. What's in your mind right now? What's on my mind right now? Yeah, what would you be right now? Like I said, like it's like it's I cycle through like a hundred different costumes and stuff. Like when she asked me the question, I went like it was like a Rolodex. I said, uh, uh, uh. and it was like mini selections. Like it was like going through like a player selection for Super Smash Brothers. So I was oh just like, gosh. okay, it will be. But in most of them, like I would, I would likely like mostly I would choose a villain. Any any way I could be a villain, okay. I would choose a villain. Okay. And like all my metaverse characters, like. If I was to be like, um, it would be mostly in the clothes is how I would change it up. Like, mm. you know, like how Corella DeVille wants to make like 101 Dalmatians into mm -hmm. like a coat. Yes. I would have like my character have like an emote where he legit grabs a Dalmatian, like kidnaps him, skins him alive, and then like wears the coat. And like, is this PG 13? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. This, this is how it all will work out. I, I've, I've told people this before too. Um, so the whole entire process of skinning the dogs and everything like in the most messed up way and like legit show them like cleaning the cleaning the fur and the leather and, and stuff and then like wearing it as a coat and then like stunning with this coat for but it has a time limit. it would be like for 12 hours mm -hmm. and in that 12 hours eventually towards the end you see like a pita person come over and like throw blood on the coat and totally ruin it and then my character just throws a fit and then i have to start the whole entire process all over again is throwing blood really conducive to the movement, though? I don't know. I don't know why PETA does what PETA does. <laughs> PETA's PETA. It's usually red paint, no? Is it red paint? I was about to say, like, is that really helpful? <laughs> is that really helping the cause <laughs> if it's blood? Right. Hey, if it's red paint, I mean, hopefully it'll wash out. But no, I'm going to make my character repeat the whole entire process every time I want to wear the coat. All right. That's, like, one idea. And then I have, like, others like where it's just like, you know, I just want super villain powers in this. That's it. I just want to be a menace in the metaverse. I dig it. That's all I want out of life. It's got to be like a Doofen, Doofenheimer or whatever. Doofenheimer. Yeah. Like this elaborate thing and then it just gets foiled at the end. You're just like, yeah, it's just like. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, It's like, uh, 
the funniest part when you bring up Doofus Smurfs is it's paired to platypus. <laughs> because like homie will just be like he'll just be walking around. He said, Oh, it's just a platypus. Then it puts on the hat. He said, Oh, it's paired. Right. <laughs> they were really tricked. Oh my gosh. Harry and really the, had them fooled. And in the episode where he was like, he said, I know you're fairy to platypus, you're not a normal platypus. And then like it was just he said, Man, it is just a normal platypus. He said, Damn. <laughs> he was so disappointed. Oh gosh. <laughs> we're like, yeah. <laughs> Good times. Okay, let me see if I have any other thoughts or questions. All right, Baz, though, what are, what you doing over there on that painting? Because I'm interested. Oh, can you see you're, them? Yeah, I can see yours. Yours, you're doing birds on there. Yes. That looks super cute, but I can't see Baz over there. Baz, what you doing? Um, so we got like. Other way. Yeah. <laughs> I did that too. <laughs> We're learning. We're learning. No, yes. Okay, that's cute. Yes. Okay. It's giving Halloween. It is. It's, I love it's Halloween. It's like my favorite. Like I live for for Halloween. Like what Halloween is it is about Halloween? What is it about it? Yeah. That you get to dress up. That there's like people are afraid of it because they don't understand it, so they call it demonic and stuff. Um, that everybody shows like really fun movies. Like everybody's like their most creative. Um, and they fully get to a sport like this whole entire it's like it's like an anime mom because it's like everybody cosplays and everybody just sports like their little fun tidbits of fairy tales and stuff or they'll dress up as like famous movies hmm. and they get really creative it brings out like the art and people i love um in october october oh, i've never participated oh, it's so much fun you just get a pen and you just draw art oh. every single day it's like one of the easiest things that you can do hmm. is open up a sketchbook and just go in that's cool inktober is so much fun what's your favorite holiday i don't have one you don't have a favorite holiday i don't what's your favorite day my favorite day mm -hmm. my birthday i knew it i knew you were gonna say it i knew is that conceited birthday i just you know knew what? it oh gosh i predicted this my anniversary uh your anniversary yeah oh okay that's that's what i haven't heard before yes. i've never i haven't heard that one before not not the single person a moment oh my gosh uh. that's that's a real first like i've never heard that on any interview this yeah is like i don't have a time. favorite holiday is that crazy no holidays yeah. kind of suck yeah yeah, Especially they do. if you work all. Right. Look at my grass. Grass, y'all. Say, oh. <laughs> Thumbnail. Say, no. What has been like the most interesting thing that has changed about you oh during gosh. your musical journey? Oh my gosh, I used to be very shy and now I'm not because I am my brand, so I gotta market myself. So I gotta Facts. get out there and talk to people. Yeah, she established, um, she established artists. Yes, she got she confidence. Really, she, she got, got confidence. She got confidence. Um but maybe I'm, it's Maybelline. Maybe she don't need a locksmith. She got it. Oh, she the key. <laughs> exactly. Um, I feel like I'm always changing. But I do feel like I'm a lot more confident than when I started doing music. I'm a lot more sure of myself. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned a lot. I don't know. Bad things keep happening, so you got to toughen up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I used to cry a lot. I'm a cancer. I used to cry a lot, y'all. Now I put it in the songs. <laughs> nice. That's how we transform it. Right. Right. That is what's up. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you're evolving through something? like bigger and better oh as you go yeah i do and that's that's probably like what the robot is you're like i'm becoming this like right mega, this mega sphere exactly oh my gosh it's internal so who are you outside the music also i'm just a girl who likes to <laughs> that was me trying to think of something <laughs> um i i mean i'm just chill i'm an introvert i like to be at home uh i don't really be going out too much um, I do enjoy a good night out, but it's like a once a month type of thing, not, not like a every weekend type of thing. I feel that. Um, I'm a dog mom, so I be at home with my little baby. What type of dog? Uh, he's a black lab. Oh. Yeah, he's the cutest thing How in the world. Old? Uh, he's three months. Mm, three months? Mm -hmm. Still a puppy? Yeah, he's Body a puppy. Yet? Yet? Oh, how yeah. Do you, how do you leave him? How do you leave him? It's hard. You know, it's hard. I be wanting to take him with me one day. 
He'll be is he potty trained yet? Are you still no, working on it? No, we're still working on it. That's why he hasn't come with me, yeah. if anything. So he has a sitter. <laughs> taking, a, taking a bathroom break in the car is one of the hardest right. things. That I'm oh, not you should get him little doggy diapers. Right? No, he would, he would throw a fit. Diapers. Oh my God, he has so much attitude. I think you need my dog with doggy diapers. Really? Yeah. Not because like um it was a puppy, but I didn't know, like this was like the moment in my childhood where I had to learn that every single animal goes through uh maturity oh yeah and i had to realize that that this is a part of growing up for every single creature on the planet yeah or maybe just mammals i don't know i don't know but i, don't I know. agree with that does anybody have a snake that bleeds when it's their time in the month or something does anybody have any reptiles <laughs> it's only mammals <laughs> okay yeah i had to learn that the hard way <laughs> I was walking around my That's house hilarious. I was like, who keeps dropping all this red Kool-Aid on the floor? <laughs> there was little spots on the floor. I was like, who, where's, where's the red Kool-Aid coming from? That's hilarious. That was a hard realization. I was the one that realized it. I, I have a whole entire house full of like women, and that was the first one. That oh, wow. It. That's where it was coming from. How many pets do you have? Um, I stopped having pets after that. Oh, okay. I used to move a lot. So. <laughs> that makes sense. So. And plus, like, it's the same reason why I can't have children. It's like... I forget, and if I forget about a child, I'm going to jail. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So that, it's just like that does happen. Yeah. Right? Like <laughs> I had plants, and I would forget about them. Mm -hmm. We would we would travel to go to like South by Southwest or something, and like I'd be like, okay, I forgot the plant. The plant almost died. Oh, but, like, I killed plants like, too. It's okay. Yeah. I feel like had a turtle once. Oh. Bought a new video game or some Legos. Just didn't see it for like a whole week. Came back. Turtle was stiff. Like, <gasps> oh, that's gonna give me nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> very fun though very oh, fun having yeah. them when they're alive i guess another thing about me i'm scared of scary movies you're scared of scary movies yes i don't like scary movies what yeah what do you what do you watch before you go to bed then i don't really watch tv actually what i'm boring guys i just make music and i play my guitars and that's so this it is like this is like your only experience as an extrovert like because every introvert yes. i'm starting to find if i their 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 extrovert their extrovert is their music. Everything else is just an introvert quality, but their extrovert is just when they do music. That's and wild because I I definitely feel that. I definitely feel that. How long did it take you to grow like that extrovert footing? Um, to do to be able to like market yourself, go out, do the things that you have to do. I mean, you really gotta fake it till you make it. Facts. So from anybody out there. Facts. Yeah. So from that like high school, I mean, I homeschooled myself for the last two years of high school. What? Yeah. You homeschooled yourself? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, I found the curriculum, signed up through the county, and was submitting my work. Don't you gotta get a parent to sign off? I mean, I did, but I did the work. Yeah. Yep, I did that for two years. What and was the decision? Like, how did you come to that decision? Like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna homeschool myself. I'm not really a fan of the school system. I hated the school system, but like, I was never that fed up to where I, I was. Too lazy. <laughs> I was just too lazy. If I wouldn't have did the work, I just wouldn't have. I just, I just know because there was no pressure. If there's nah. nobody to shame me into doing something, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, like, no. Of, like, my my uh, motivation to do anything is like, it's shame. Yeah, nah. A lot but... of human motivation is shame, by the way. So yeah, that's that's, okay. that's true. That's like I think that's what humans will sell out is to shame one another into doing things. Yeah, that's kind of true. You didn't go to war? Shame on you. Uh, you didn't. You that's didn't crucify that man? Shame on you. Not a legionnaire. He's the Dang. Christ. So pin him up. <laughs> uh, shame. Shame, shame, shame. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I homeschooled two years. Yeah. I feel like that's when I really started to find my confidence because I stepped away from, I mean, I feel like when you're young like that, you get influenced by everything around you. Mm -hmm. And if you're at school all day, who are your influences? Your peers. Oh my God. And they were so boring. They must've been so boring to you. Not you even boring. Amazing. I just, I was really shy. I was insecure. And I felt like stepping away from that definitely helped build my confidence when I wasn't, oh. you know, around. This is the first time that. that I've heard seclusion is like the That's motivation the to becoming more, <laughs> more open and out there. I love my me time. I feel that. Yeah, I you, do. You need time for your batteries to recharge. Oh, yeah, for sure. Everybody needs time for their batteries to recharge. I don't care if I'm an extrovert out there. Even you got to shut up and leave people alone mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. 
No, yeah, I love mommy time. And I feel like being homeschooled definitely gave me an opportunity to kind of grow as a person faster because mm -hmm. I was by myself so much. Or with my mom, my mom would take me out and we would do like field trips. Field trips? Where yeah. You guys used to go, where was your favorite place to go with your mom? Uh, I mean, Girani. I was always in Girani. Um, that was actually my first job too. I, I worked there. Yeah, I was a barista. Nice. I'm in the best coffee. Sorry, y'all. It's like, no. Um, not about to throw shade. How many jobs have you had? Or uh, like, how many? Hmm. What was after that? Have you, have you played? Hmm. 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 Yeah. Sheesh. I'll beat you. you said way more. That's crazy. <laughs> I've only ever had like one job. Yeah. Just sit at home, play Xbox all day. For a while, because I was doing music, it would interfere with my work schedule. Mm -hmm. So that's why I also did social media. It was because I wanted a, a job where I could work from home. So yes. it wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like I had to take off work all the time. I could just go do what I needed to do and work when I needed to work. You know what's messed up? Mm -hmm. I used to be a bartender mm -hmm. and like, I, I took like two trips to Ohio to like perform out there. No, three trips to Ohio to perform out there. And they were about to let me and my brother go because we were two of the bars. He's like, well, every time you guys leave, we just don't have any bars. And I said, bro, we've only done it three times. <laughs> and bro, you know, I've been fired from a job for traveling for music before. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Well, you just had to go and they probably want to give you the day off. Did they? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I went in and I was like, hey, I have this opportunity to go to LA for music. Um, so I'm asking for two weeks off and they came back with a termination letter. Are you serious? Yeah. What job was this? I worked at a bank. I'm not gonna say which bank. No, banks? Okay, listen. It was a credit union. Anybody that works for a credit union or works for a bank, I need all the young people out there to listen to this. They are slave drivers. They will put you on a slave wage. Most of the people that work for Wells Fargo don't pay their workers enough to actually live and do anything. And they work there full time. Never work for a bank. All banks should fail until they do better for all of their employees. That's a business. Yeah. Yeah, banks suck. One of my homies works for a bank. He can never do anything he was, no? Yeah, I was there for two months. <laughs> and then that was a no. So moved on. Forget that. Yeah, I was like, um, all right, mm -hmm. I'll just leave. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. If you had the since you're an R B artist, I'm pretty sure like people you ever you ever like people who come up to you and they ask for like love advice or something like that love advice actually no no i feel like people should ask r&b artists for love you advice. know that's a really i feel like we'd be terrible to give love advice i mean yeah but i feel like it's something people should be asking for yeah but they're I mean, probably not they're like i just listened to that song it was tragic i'm definitely not right i mean I, if you listen to the music it's toxic some but of this like, is toxic like that, that's like the people you want to learn from because they have the most experience in the field of like oh that's a good point that's a good perspective that's interesting Anything about it like that. Like if somebody was to come up to you and they were to ask like for love advice, what would you tell them? Um, or if you're asking, honestly, this is what I tell people. If anyone, no one asks me for advice on relationships because they know what I'm going to say. My friends know what I'm going to say. What do you say? Leave. <laughs> if you're coming to me about your problems, just go. Just, <laughs> just break up. Ew. Why are you going to ask me? I'm not part of the relationship. I don't know what y'all need. Y'all, yeah. yeah. You're always, with them every day. Come on now. Girl, he just always in my fridge eating my sandwiches. Right. Okay. I'm Kick him out. <laughs> Kick him out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to him about my needs and my sandwiches. Uh, don't bite. <laughs> Jesus. Nah, I'm cutthroat. Oh, jeez. Low key cutthroat. When it comes to that, because I'm like, come on now. If you can't tell them how you're feeling, you have to tell me to how to can you tell them? Yeah, like how that you're should feeling. definitely be your first go to. But I get it. Sometimes I just think people just need to vent. Yeah, I think so too. Most, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, they, if I'm asked for advice, that's what the answer is. But if you're just venting, then I'm probably not going to tell you anything. Vent. Yeah, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to have people in my inbox venting. Yeah, because I don't want to hear. I want you to do something to stream. I'm like, cut their hair in their sleep. Video uh, tape it for me. Uh, hey, guys, look what I got a fan to do. Oh, my God. Savage. It's like, <laughs> that's terrible. Don't do, that. <laughs> don't do that. That'll run the views up. Yeah, don't do that. Definitely getting canceled. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, this guy out here committing crimes against humanity. How's your painting? Oh, my painting is coming. Kind of I like the red. It looks like pink. Your looks even better. Like hey. at first, like I feel like we're I feel like we're connecting. Like our, our paintings are reaching. Mm -hmm. Right, our tree. Aww. Yeah, that's cool. Because at first, like it was very like. 
very like popping, vibrant, and mm -hmm. you add a little bit of gray to add like tinge clouds. Mm -hmm. like, Darkened it up a little bit. Yeah. Added a mood. What is your favorite like mood to be in when you create music? Faded. It's like. <laughs> Did. but she yeah no it's like, it's like <laughs> um i mean i i find i write the fastest it depends okay because i've done i've done sessions where i can knock out like six songs in a session mm -hmm. be there all day but i can and knock six songs, songs out like they'll great. be finished but will they be great songs like quality yeah good quality yeah okay. yeah i can write a song in five minutes but nice. i have to be in the right mindset for that so usually it's when I'm really feeling any type of emotion to like the extremes. If I'm really mad, I can write a song. So it has to be condensed. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But there's also times where if I'm just playing guitar mm -hmm. or if I'm playing, I don't know, or if I'm just listening to beats where I can just hear a melody and then just start going. Mm -hmm. So I've been working, I've been practicing both because I want to get good at both and yeah. I want to be able to write in any situation. So I try and, you know, quiz myself and try a different way every time you feel like um you work well as like a freestyle artist freestyle yeah like could you like if i was just like this like the beat right now could you like i'm not doing something to make it a song? i mean i don't want to do that right now <laughs> if i was to give you a topic maybe a topic i even do it with you y'all don't want to hear me freestyle i don't want to hear me freestyle <laughs> okay. not to do that don't do that i'll hear you freestyle um, it's not, I'm not being interviewed. <laughs> True. They see me on this podcast all the time. They know what I do. Right? <laughs> they heard enough. What other tricks do I know, though? Mm. Um, Aaron, any questions pop up on your mind? Oh, here we go. Oh, no. Here we go. So we've been holding it in. Mm. Ready? All right. Um, so... At the end of the day, say you didn't have like a good day, maybe you're sad or just didn't work out, maybe you didn't hit any marks. How do you unwind? And on a good day where you hit your marks and you're maybe happy or whatever, how do you unwind? That's a great question. And the answer is this. <laughs> this is going to make me sound like a stoner, but <laughs> I end my ways that way <laughs> every day. <laughs> um, but when I do have bad days, I write everything I'm feeling. Whether it's in my notes section, it could be on a piece of paper. I write down exactly how I'm feeling and I just don't look at it again. I just let everything I'm feeling just go into that note and then just leave it because I don't know. There's no point. I feel like nothing is ever that deep, but I do get worked up sometimes too. So I'm a very emotional person and I feel things very deeply. And so I have to write things down to let them go. Sometimes I keep them and they turn into songs eventually, but most of the time it's just writing to let things go. Um, they used to call they, they used to be a name for that method if you recall like mm -hmm. it was like when you would write your emotions down and you just like destroy a letter or something or like when you were oh yeah somebody, i've heard yeah the letter afterwards mm -hmm. i used to do that actually my parents had a fire pit in their backyard so in the summertime i would do stuff like that I wish I could recall the name for that yeah but um on a good day mm -hmm. i really like moonshine mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, oh my gosh, you're southern. You're so southern. I, is that southern? I guess. Moonshine is super southern. Yeah, I like. Know. If y'all want to make my day, you send me some apple pie moonshine. That oh is. My gosh, where do I even find moonshine? The ABC store. Yeah. They sell moonshine. Oh yeah. yeah or like, total wine. I've anyway. always felt like it was like something you had to like make in the back. Like it was like meth. You just had to cook it up in the back of the door. said, let me go in the back right quick. Like it just seems like this prohibition way. thing. No, I, I really enjoy it though. For whatever reason um i also really enjoy cooking so Ooh, we got to get you on the cooking show i notice that when I, I do have bad days i'm probably not gonna make dinner <laughs> i'll eat but i'm not about to go all out and make something you know <laughs> i'm just not gonna not eat but yeah yeah but on a good day i really like making food i have a caribbean background so i make a lot of jamaican food Amo, i'm trying to put together a caribbean fest bro place. i wanted I to want do that one. i want one here let's do that okay, yay yeah, yay i be looking my brother's from uh trinidad okay stuff. i'm a really big fan of like um carnival yeah um, festival yeah and i really want to see one brought to uh prince william county oh word i need carnival I need that. oh what? that'd be I wild that. that'd be wild but i'm here for people it dressed up i need people like all out all out i need i need the full experience i need Listen. i need the full meals i need everything everything yeah i can the music everything the yeah. live 
let's talk because i know some people that can make things happen like that uh, hey I'm, I'm serious so you better give me these contacts yeah i'm, I'm serious too okay bet. you're <laughs> gonna get it popping bet carib fest coming soon right stay um, tuned prince room county stay tuned yeah i love cooking though I what make... is your favorite meal uh i make uh jamaican curry chicken it's so good curry chicken i can do jerk chicken with some plantain rice and peas what else goes with that the queen's accent right festival oh my gosh a little bit of cabbage something i don't know i make a lot of jamaican food that is nice yeah yeah you're way cooler now than oh really first started the interview now that you weren't already cool i was about to say like wow (laughs) like like you're like like your coolness factor went up even more which i didn't think was possible oh wow thank you that is an honor yeah uh what is cool i i don't know like what do you consider cool being yourself i feel like that makes anyone cool some people shouldn't be themselves though because you think are, so yeah some people are just naturally a-holes oh uh, yeah that's <laughs> just true naturally jerks <laughs> they should figure out how to be nicer yeah Me, i'm a natural jerk so i have to work on that <laughs> i naturally i naturally have a lot of road rage so that's when i'm a no, jerk you live in virginia i know right There's, you don't have Bro, a lot of road rage. just getting into woodbridge was a hassle for no reason but i'm petty i'm a petty this morning let me not talk yeah no no say it say it this morning bro i was driving you gonna turn me up (laughs) and they i was driving and this dude was right on the back of me and i'm like come on now we do not need to be kissing okay we don't need to be here i don't even know you so i lightly tap my brake you know give the little courtesy get back and he didn't and so there was another car in the lane to the next like next to me they were driving mad slow so I just drove next to them and I just kept my little close distance to them. This guy was riding on the back of me trying to get behind me and I didn't let him through until we got to the red light. Cause that's, I was just being petty, but I was like, bro, just back up. There was no need. Facts. And he was already where he was trying to go. Like he wasn't in a rush. I will keep saying this until we are Prince William County's like public media, but speeding gets you nowhere quicker. Right? We have done road trips that last for 24 hours. We have sped. Oh, I'm supposed to do this one. <laughs> okay um, we have sped we have we have went 100 miles per hour supposed to go be, be going 70 we, we went 100 and you guessed you guessed it we got there at the same time that it was predicted yeah. those lights will always stop you lights are designed to stop you you will never beat those lights and you will never beat that time speeding doesn't help and tailgating people will not get you there faster no yeah. matter if you take the highway or anywhere you go you will always get there at the same relative time the best thing that you can do if you want to get there earlier Leave earlier. earlier. That is the secret. A word from your sponsor, Bucky Top. Mm. Speaking of road trips and traffic in the DMV, mm-hmm. yeah. we always knew we were back because the last like hour and a half is just sitting in DMV traffic. Yeah. So, no matter what time. Even getting here, yeah. I mean, I told y'all, I was like, um, there is gonna be traffic. So <laughs> you leave the DMV area, you you reach like this part of the road where it just opens up and you're just like you're like wow <laughs> this is what it's like to drive right uninhibited right anywhere in america you go you can just do that then you come back to this area or you go to la and it's just like it's okay. stress it's just all stress i feel like in la the road signs are more suggestions because people don't really follow them anyway <laughs> yeah it's kind of like nah, facts. Like, they get mad at you for following yeah the for like, going the speed limit everybody be doing like 180 <laughs> in a 45 come on now at us before mm that's terrible that's crazy you said you play guitar yes. are there any other instruments that you're interested in trying to learn Ooh, or that's learning a- i love these questions um oh the harp the harp i have you this will be desire Ill. bro hey, right Mo. no you will be ill like, i'm talking like nobody ever seen nothing like that they said like you playing everything like hilton you can go up to hilton yeah to, like, the event like, classical everything bro. yeah you start playing the harp it's over exactly it's over for y'all it's like it's over it's for over everybody. shut it down you hear that shut it it's down. over <laughs> it's over <laughs> every other camera shut it down it's over yes you i'm gonna be, be just imagine oh my god that would be so fire someone on the bongos me just Crushing that would it. be that would be crazy i would oh love to god. learn how to play the harp yeah that's a very expensive you'll be ill instrument to get into i don't know how people carry them now 
They're like thirty-five thousand dollars, like fifteen thousand dollars, seven thousand dollars for one harp. Yeah. Wait, what? It's an expensive instrument to get into. Um, I don't know what else to add. Maybe I should. Oh, once it's almost like you, like you feel like you've added everything. That's like usually the sign that we probably oh. exhausted all of our questions, most likely. Oh. <laughs> Let me like, sign it. Definitely sign it. What do you feel like you felt while painting this? Joy and peace. I feel like you have a very free spirit. Yeah. And you're really definitely flex that. And during this conversation, you have given us nothing but like individual individualism and like this type of like free essence. And oh. I feel like your painting reflects on that. Thank you. <laughs> Let me show the camera. Let me show the camera. Look how pretty it is. So cute. Which one you want? Which one you want, Aaron? Which which camera are we pointing to? No, sure. Oh, it's good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thumbnail. Oh man. Got the clouds a little bit. Nice little tree. Oh yeah, that's nice. Get a picture. Get a picture of the last one. Brandon, can you do a boomerang? Of Ooh, me? We're doing a boomerang too. Or not a boomerang. We Aaron, can do a boomerang. My phone's all the way back there. Aaron, do you have any more questions? Um what kind of concert would you put on for your fans like if you had the unlimited budget and mm -hmm. resources to just like put on your grand event concert what would you want it to be wow um i would love to do my own version of coachella i guess yeah i would love to do a festival with like festivals. You know, oh we'll yeah some festivals yeah i would love to okay pull up pull up to the art center whenever all right or, or join our discord and we can put together some festivals yeah that sounds cool i would I love to do that want to throw some festivals. yeah i want to i really want to do that um yeah but it would have like i don't know i would do it i don't know that's a really good question I, that actually stumped me because i that's something i probably should have thought about follow up to that since you said you want to do festivals what other artists would you want to perform at your festivals i want a combination of my favorite artists and some local artists because i would love to put on the dmv in any way that i can i'd be trying to put a dmv on whenever i can so you personality yeah, we like what local hey. artists do you have in mind um from this area or just in general in general that you have in mind like it's your concert your grandiose oh, okay, okay, thing. Okay. like um who's coming up with you well kendrick's gonna be performing obviously i love steve lacy he's gonna be there this is gonna be a very diverse mix erica can be there who else who we got room for my pocket's hurting just listening to her i know <laughs> like my pocket's <laughs> Those tickets would be expensive right um jid he just dropped a project that'd be good ari lennox oh my god she is an amazing artist already i feel like ari lennox is like remember how we were talking about parody platypus mm -hmm. like did i would i would legit walk past her and not notice her and then she would start singing and i'd be like i'm like, Ari Lennox. like oh my god like that's that's like yeah she seems very personable i would say like she says somebody i can just walk past every single day in walmart and never realize it was her i see her on tv all the time <laughs> yeah i've seen her live too this is all at the same festival that lights on festival but she was live and it was just her on stage with the spotlight and it was amazing she has great stage presence oh my god I was soaking it all up. Boom, my painting is finite. So who are some local artists you would include? I would do... Who wants to die? So Ooh, I know! I just want to take your life for you. I just want to put you back on that wheel of karma. I said, I'm sorry. Come on, bro. All right. Um, local artists that I would do... Uh, all my people said Jirani. I feel like we could do like a stage and have like... I don't know. I feel like every time I get around people from there, it's like a reunion kind of. And we always talk about doing stuff together. Um, so I don't know if y'all know El Marquis. So I would definitely throw him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's awesome. Um, he's actually my bass player too. Nice. So he would get put on for sure. Um, She's putting all the homies on first. Right. I mean, all of OKO. I don't know if they're still called OKO. That time of studio, Benny and all them, I put them on for sure. Um, Butu. Um, uh, Y'all, it would. I mean, it would be cool to do like a live podcast at the festival. We can hope. That's what I'm saying. I'm looking right at y'all. Yeah. We all have your own exhibit and do interviews with people all at that are attending it and all that. That'd be That's super cool. Do. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I'm drawing blanks right now, y'all. <laughs> 
put me on the spot. <laughs> that, that's what the question started. I know, for. yeah, it's good though. I, I like feel that. like I exhausted all my. I feel like Aaron has like a complete like arsenal ready to go. <laughs> He's like, okay, he's done. My turn. Right. He's like, <laughs> another follow up. <laughs> We're trying to be the best interviewers ever. You're doing really well. I'm enjoying it. I'm very comfortable. Gosh. Let me go home and be like, I have to go first. That I was doing oh! very well. Mom. <laughs> Snuggle in bed. Like, it's like, <laughs> I'm going to tell my mom. My mom was going to be like, okay. <laughs> She's going to be like, who? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't even know what you do outside of this house. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, who let you outside of this right. house? Right. <laughs> you said, I thought I told you to do them dishes. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's usually where the conversation actually goes. So you, actually, you know what it's like to have her on. Yes, I have two. That's exactly where it goes. Yes. I have one more question. Mm. If you could, not if you, do you, are there any two genres or more that you would like to try and combine from like, anywhere in the world what kind of music do you, would you be like if i combine these this could be interesting yeah. i really want to include some bossa nova elements to my music i'm i love bossa nova yeah it's like brazilian music is it like what is, is it like it's like it's, samba it like jazz it's, that's what i feel yeah, like it was yeah. already a mix of something mm -hmm. um samba jazz so yeah like samba, and then you have like a little bit of like mm -hmm. it's a vibe i really it's enjoy like listening movie, to it you know, like, yeah and they're doing like um what's that what's that uh brazilian fighting style oh capoeira or no? capoeira, <laughs> capoeira <laughs> literally <laughs> i love that that vibe though um so i would love to incorporate yeah i would love to include that in my music sure. um and definitely classical, obviously, because I, I play violin and I'm trying to transition into R&B with it. But it's kind of hard trying to switch from playing classical only to so try and... trying to blend classical with bossa nova. Mm. But I feel like that's and very high brown yeah. and R&B. They're trying to blend the three styles together. Yeah. And she's trying to be international. You all need to see this now. Like She's trying to be super international. Because ain't nobody doing that. Ain't nobody ever said nothing like that. <laughs> Hey. If you pull that off, how, do you think you can pull it off? Yeah. I, think I believe in myself. I think you can pull it off easily. Yeah. I think you can pull that off. That'd and be cool. You can create something like really dope. If Japanese music has found mm. a way to incorporate like 10 different styles into one song yeah. and make that a normal right? thing, I think you could pull it off. You know, I also love Japanese jazz too. Japanese like from the 70s. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, um, what is that one joint? Oh my gosh. We watched somebody perform it live at Jerani's one time, and I was just like, I was shocked that she oh, knew it. Yeah. It was, uh, oh my gosh, I have I have a whole entire Japanese, like, it's all this vaporwave. Oh. It's like 70s Japanese jazz. <laughs> Send it me is, that list. like vaporwave. Um, there's this song, and she like killed it. Like she sung it in Japanese and mm -hmm. everything. Wow. It's called Wash from Mika. No, it wasn't Wash. Oh my gosh. Or was it Wash? It definitely wasn't washed. It was not washed, <laughs> bro. Why can't I Pull up to Granny like, wait. <laughs> Stay with me. It's by Miki Masu. That was send me that. Songs. It's called Wash, but it's called it's by Miki Masu. Okay. Masu Bara, and it's Stay with me. Hmm. Stay with me. I wanna walk Something like that, but it's it's hard. It's okay. very hard. I'm gonna get up. Yeah. Send me that. Send me that. Send me that. Yes, please. That's cool. I think, like, since you're finally putting on your paper, I have. Do you, do you feel content? I do. I like, do it. like it. Yes, I'm reflecting. Did you sign it? I did. You signed it? Yeah. Oh my God. You didn't even have to be told. You're a real painter. You're a real painter. My like mom's a painter. Been a great interview. Yeah. Um, is there any shout outs or anything you want to say out to your, to your fans? Out there? Shout out to the. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, if you guys would like to follow me on social media, that is always appreciated as an independent artist. You know, all the love counts. Um, definitely shoot me DMs too, because I love talking to people who follow me and building relationships. Um, so my Instagram is abigail.fur. So it's A B I G A I L dot F U R R. I also got Facebook. I'm about to start kicking off my YouTube channel again. So nice. that would be the best place to connect with me because I just try and. I'm gonna just be myself. <laughs> so if you want to follow me there, definitely do that. 
but thanks for having me guys this was no so much problem. fun this has been like really fun it's been really interesting learning all about you yeah and learning like these wild facts and like your experiences you seem like a very fun outgoing person and i hope like everybody gets to see you perform one day because you're not dropping music yet so this this will be like their only way of like seeing how dope you are yeah so we're looking forward to actually popping i'm looking forward to actually like popping up in the yes. one of your performances i'll send like, tickets let me know oh, please yeah. please like send us some tickets yeah um but yes this has been another episode of painting with friends as usual i'm baz hayes and this has been abigail first thanks guys <laughs> Are you controlling? Oh yeah, for sure.